Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Man Packs. Manly goods on a schedule. Get started today and have underwear, socks, toiletries, shaving supplies, and more delivered to your door. Visit manpacks.com slash twit and get $10 off your first order of $30 or more. Or buy a $50 gift card for $40. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode 98, recorded on Tuesday, February 26, 2013. We are, or at least we hope to be, your source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I am Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Gina Trapani. And High definition Gina Trapani. Look at that. And, and you can actually see me. It's, yes. It's kind of amazing, actually. It's like living in the future. I love it. It's like, <laughs> it I, I, seriously, it like she is actually in better definition than we are. I and know. we're here. <laughs> and so it's amazing. I know. It's a new new network treating me much better. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm happy we kind of got that all figured out. And I mean, the, the connectivity, you look and sound great. So awesome, awesome job there getting that figured out. Thank you for doing that. Excellent. Yeah, sure. Uh, Thanks. I'm sure it helps on the return video, too. So you're probably does, reaping the benefits as well. <laughs> I can see your haircut and your facial hair all the clearer. Yeah, so. I, mean, I know last week you probably thought that my hair was still long um, <laughs> based on your connectivity. I really picked the wrong week to look like I'm on a bender, huh? <laughs> Thanks. Not good. <laughs> well, uh, we plan, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people in Barcelona right now on a bender. Uh, te yeah. <laughs> a tech bender? Wow, that was a horrible segue. This week Sorry. we'll be discussing Mobile it. World I'll Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Project Glass, uh, the Twitter token conundrum. Interesting story there. And possibly, maybe, I don't know, a little Ron rant? Hey, I, I have reason to. Yeah? Yeah, stuff happened. You know. Anybody who follows me on Twitter knows might have a hint of what, what happened. So you'll That's find right. out more. You've got so. that to look forward to. But first, let's talk about the news. So, uh, Google Plus sign-in. This is uh, just kind of hit the news today. Google Play Services 3.0 was announced this morning. It enables some cool things, things like Google Plus sign-in for sites, similar to like Facebook Connect, yep. uh, those types of things, sharing uh, kind of your profile, allowing you to log in with your Google Plus credentials and have that kind of tie into the site. Also enabled the ability to embed a Google Play link into your site. So if you're an app developer, you can put a link onto your site and uh, allow someone to basically install directly from there, not have that take them to the Play Store. So it kind of keeps everybody uh, into your experience on the site. Some pretty cool stuff. I think the Google Plus sign-in, I'm really kind of eager to use that because a lot of times like Facebook, for me, I, I realize like with this whole sign-in thing, it's not like suddenly everybody can see my profile, but Facebook's like my personal stuff and, you know, my personal family stuff. And the, the more I can not use that in an everywhere sort of way, the better. Google Plus is more my public thing, so I would love, well, I love yeah, that. And, and, it's, and another use that I was going to say is for uh, folks who are active on Facebook but not very active on Google Plus, yeah. and you don't want to worry about having to worry about what Facebook apps publish to your feed right. or anything like that. This is kind of like the equivalent, could be the equivalent of the Hotmail email address that you use to sign up for things so you, you avoid getting spam emails. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but I, I think this is something that they had to do. I mean, a lot of people are like, why are they doing it? It's another authentication mode. But the the whole idea is to build this infrastructure that the users come and participate on and somewhat never leave. This will make sharing on Google Plus that, that much easier, um, as well as just a whole deeper integration. And it's it's part of the larger strategy of Google Plus. So I wasn't surprised that this was announced. If anything, I was like, really, it took this long? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, this this is really great for developers. And in fact, I went to a workshop uh, at Google I.O. last year, and it was it used to be called History, and it was in sort of just a dev preview. And it was just this this idea of moments, like when that, that something would happen, that you'd listen to a song or you'd purchase something and it would show up in your Google your Google Plus stream. And at the time, it was like, oh, of course, that's exactly what Facebook does. But I'm really happy with the way that they launched this. And I agree with Ron. It was like, I can't believe it took, took them this long. But what's really interesting about this for developers is that when you sign in with Google, you can choose what Google apps 
your app has access to. And there's so many products in the Google, you know, ecosystem that, that you know, you could, you could build an app that, you know, analyzes your Gmail and then backs it up to Google Drive. Or, I mean, there's so many things. There's calendar and maps and location. Like, there's so many possibilities for user data that you can access and write to just through the Google, you know, the Google sphere that it's it's really attractive for, for, for developers. And, and I also liked that they kind of took a pot shot at Facebook's, uh, you know, frictionless sharing, right? They, 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 don't the the apps don't spray uh, updates right. about what music I'm listening to or what I bought you know just kind of uh, without letting you know right you you're, you you consciously choose what you want to share if you give something a negative review there's no buy button you know if you give something a positive review there is a buy button like the, it's it's kind of smart by the the way that it shares your activity across these apps in your stream and um, and it won't spam your stream like you know your stream won't just be a, a list of songs you listen to and things you bought and restaurants you checked in at uh, somebody actually has to go to your profile and look and care if they mm -hmm. want to, which is nice, which is different than the Facebook kind of constant stream down the right side of what other everybody's doing. Well, if, if anything, yeah. I mean, Facebook has developed this stuff and developed this uh, this kind of functionality over the span of several years. And now to, to a certain degree, Google Plus is a bit of a blank chalkboard that they can kind go of learning say, from those mistakes or yeah. exactly yeah, and lessons, improving yeah. them and saying, okay, what annoys us? And, and I mean, if Google's smart and we know they are, they're saying, okay, what annoys us about Facebook? How can we make, how can we make Google Plus a better environment? Um, and clearly they're doing that. Like we've seen it with the events thing where I kind of like the Google plus events a bit better than the Facebook events mm -hmm. and just little, I do too. Yeah. Little yeah. things like that. And, and if enough of those changes happen, will more people use it? I mean, that's the, that's the question, you know, will people, what yeah. does it take to get off of Facebook and, and dedicate to Google plus? And ultimately that's where are your friends? Yeah, so. absolutely. Right. Uh, uh, just kind of along these lines real quick before we move on. Uh, there is also a new settings page that kind of comes in along with this capability. New Google Services app included with the launch of Play Service uh, Services 3. And uh, so you'll see a new kind of settings uh, location inside your device that, that allows you to kind of get at these things. So if there's something new appearing in your menu uh, suddenly, you know it's uh, as a result of this and allows you to kind of access your settings around those services. So uh, you'll see that. But cool stuff. Cool. Ron, music. So, yeah, That's more, your beat, right? In, yeah, I'm on the music beat. Um, <laughs> in more cool news, um, and and not, again, one of those, not a surprise. I'm surprised it took this long, really. Uh, the Financial Times reported that uh, Google is in talks with the record labels to develop a streaming music service. Um, rumor is it's going to hit third quarter if they can get all the negotiations done. Um, Google is at the same time they're negotiating all of the music licenses for YouTube. If you know YouTube has become a very big spot for music in terms of music videos and songs that are played, and YouTube has improved their ability to to, um, to you know fight co you know copy protection and report. And actually, I saw Billboard is going to start implementing YouTube's uh, kind of plays into their mm -hmm. numbers. So kind of craziness. Absolutely. So Google is possibly using that to leverage these negotiations to build a Spotify or RDO-like service that will allow streaming music to go within the Google uh, Play Music experience. Um, this is really cool. Um, I think the, the well, I don't think, what's been reported is the one of the kind of stumbling blocks is the uh, what the record labels accuse Google of their uh, kind of uh, not <laughs> being not so diligent about fighting piracy. <laughs> which right. is the the constant fear of the music industry. But uh, this is something, I mean, what do, what do you guys think? This is something that I think Google Music uh, absolutely needs, and I would love if they had it because I would never leave the environment. I yeah, completely... I've yeah, yeah go for I it, totally Gina. agree. I've, I've been using Play Music a lot more lately, and I would love to see something streaming. I mean, Google's always got to has to walk that line between you know publishers and movie producers and you know music. That there's always that sort of piracy. Uh, you're giving our content away. You know, fight going on between them. So it's kind of a sensitive thing. But if they can figure out how to how to make those collaborations happen and, and make the uh, streaming streaming service happen, I would definitely spend a lot more time in it. Play yeah. Music is is great. Like I've I've spent a lot more time with it in the past few weeks, and I and I and I really love it. And I would love to see that component introduced to it. And it's interesting because, I, and I was on Tech News today yesterday, and we mm -hmm. talked we talked about this a lot. And you know, Spotify's out there, Audio's out there. You know, Xbox has a has a streaming service. Like, there's a lot of streaming um, services to choose from, but I feel like none of them have got it right. So is it another opportunity where Google can look at what the other folks are doing and develop something that gets it right? Well, and right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the streaming services don't all also have the music locker component. Exactly. And that's that's exactly what I'm looking forward yeah. to. I love Spotify and you know, I I my wife pays for it. I just yeah. use it on the web and 
you know, it's it's perfectly sufficient. I want one thing that does all of that stuff so yeah. that I don't have to think about, oh, well, this is, you know, this is the library that I have over here, but this is all the music that I own over here and have it separated. Also worth noting that, early, you know, today on TNT as well, but it was big news today, the music industry revenues grew for the first time since 1999, and that's driven by digital sales and things like Spotify and everything. So this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and I yeah. really want it to happen soon. Cause yeah, and, and you know, I've been a long-time uh, critic of Google Music or Google Play Music when it came out, mainly because of the, records, uh, the record prices. Mm. So a new album comes out, and I comparison shop, and I look at it on Amazon, and Amazon's MP3 service undercuts Google Play all the time, um, you know, sometimes by a factor of a few dollars. Yeah. Um, but if Google Play has got the music streaming, I don't need to buy the album. Man, I don't care about buying the album. Exactly. If, if it has yeah. the streaming. Now and, that's, that said, yeah. I do want to buy the album, and if they can make it that much easier to either subsidize or bring the album prices down, I will gladly pay to own the album and get the MP3s and hold it in my library, but still stick with Google Play for or Google Music for whatever streaming app I'm doing and get rid of RDO and Spotify. Yep. So, um, RDO and Spotify, I've got to be worried. I pay for audio. I don't know why. I do, don't pay do for Spotify. That, I use them both. <laughs> do you think that our kid, like, so I think the distinction when you're streaming, so like I uploaded my entire library to, to play music. And so, and I, you know, stream that. I mean, I own those files, right? But they're in the cloud. Yeah. Then you have these streaming services and stuff that you don't own. I mean, do you think that our kids are like, teen, you know, teenagers today, <laughs> uh, really kind of like distinguished between what you own? You know, if you can listen to it, isn't that kind of like owning it? I, it's always kind of the oh. question with streaming, streaming services for me still. I've still got that like old school uh, view of like, I've got this terabyte external hard right. drive. Yeah. Like, full of my library and it's there and I own it even though they're just files and it doesn't matter where you yeah. store there's, them. There's going to be a whole generation that knows, knows that's going to laugh at us for thinking that, that knows nothing mm -hmm. about that. I mean, you know, I, yeah. I'm the same way. Like I've got, you know, t you know, terabytes and gigabytes of, of music that I need to have and when I like an album, I go and buy it and download it and then I have it and, but like lately I've been, you know, why? Ownership yeah. doesn't right. matter if you have pure access right it's right. the if you same can thing to it anytime it's the right what's the yeah. distinction yeah because the cloud because the cloud has gotten to a point where it's dependable although that's in my that's ranch kind of we'll talk point. it a little bit yeah, actually right. but but sure. um yeah but to the point where where you know essentially with my phone and with my computer and with my tablets i can get to it anywhere what you're, what the why you want ownership or why you need a, a, a streaming service that has offline ab abilities at least for me is that it, i can't go completely offline because when i go get on a plane for five hours I want to have music with me and if I can't get it connected to the to the cloud then I need that music locally mm -hmm. you know Spotify and RDO do have local sync and all that sort of stuff so they've somewhat figured and, it out and Google and music uh, exactly. syncs the, the last things you've played or the things yep. that you pin yep um, having it be a passive thing, I think, yeah. is also kind of important because you don't want to always have to think about that if you're so used to everything being in the cloud the, to have to really sit down and be like, okay, well, I want this album for this trip and where's that other one? I want to pull that down. You know, if it's more passive, I think that's... The important powerful. distinction will be the design standpoint of yeah. how Google... Because so I've got 18,000 songs up on Google Play Music. What is the difference between my songs right. and the streaming right. service? So we'll see. But keep an eye on it. So third quarter, so that if all the negotiations go, well, I'm sure Please. when when they trip up, we'll hear all about it. So. Yeah. So the Wall Street Journal, uh, getting back a little more Android centric and the Samsung conversation we've been having the last couple of episodes, uh, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Google is getting nervous about Samsung's dominance uh, in Android. Uh, Android sell, Samsung sells about 40% of Android devices. And I think that the, the fear that the Wall Street Journal reports is that is that Samsung will have enough leverage to, to negotiate a, a more a better deal with Google and get more of their ad revenue. Uh, Samsung in the past has received more than 10% of Google online advertising revenue generated from its web search, en web search engine, according to the journal sources. Uh, at, at Mobile World Congress this week, Andy Rubin was was talking about Samsung and he and and he just said there's one big company it's been hugely successful and it has nothing to do with Android. It's been all about execution. Uh, and he said, should we be unfair to Samsung? Can't do that. Have to be fair to everyone. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that that, that, that Google's really nervous about Samsung? I mean, I, I read this and I thought... Google's yeah. got nothing to worry about. I mean, I know Samsung has their deal with with Windows Phone, and they're doing um, they're they're launching a phone with uh, with Tizen. Yeah, Tizen. Right? They're, Tizen they're like moving Bada into Tizen yep. or something. Yeah, yeah. 
But I got to tell you, I just can't imagine. I don't know. And I think this might be from my sort of tunnel, like Google fangirl kind of tunnel vision. Of like, I can't imagine buying a phone without Android on it. Like, it's about Android for me. I mean, it's certainly about the handset as well. But I just don't feel like Google has anything to worry about. I don't know. What do you guys think? See, but that moment when you say I've got nothing to worry about is exactly the moment you need to start worrying. <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, I mean, like, you can't fall back on your laurels. And the thing is that if Samsung, for some reason, moves completely to, you, you know, uh, let's say they embrace Windows Mobile, which we know isn't going to happen. But let's say, so, you know, let's say Firefox OS proves to be, you know, substantial or something else that we don't even know about. And they shift their entire line away from Android. What happens to that market share? It's decimated. I right. Could, They're kind of starting over again. Yeah. Moving away from Android, like I mean, can oh, you I think imagine? It's crazy. Yeah, are you but, gonna buy Samsung phones with Tizen or with 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 Windows or even Firefox? Although although Samsung did say and that was the next story in the rundown. Sam Samsung did say they're no interest, no interest in the in the Firefox OS. Right. Uh, but sure, but but, 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 but didn't didn't did, didn't Steve Jobs say that there there was no tablet? Well, that's true. I'm just saying. I mean, like, yeah, they, they right. say things because they're the same at the right time. But but if Firefox Firefox brings enough money in terms of licensing or does whatever, Samsung will change their tune, you know? Right. Yeah. I, right. And I guess, you know, another question is, you know, is Android important to Samsung? Android as an OS at this point, I think, is very important to Samsung. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Could Samsung get to the point to where they don't feel the need to have their offerings be on a regular version of Android, but they kind of splinter it off, kind of like Amazon. Do you think yeah. that could be possible? Because then they're kind of by, but then yeah. they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot because yeah, I think, I think a big part of why they're successful is because of that access to all the Google services. And right. Then you lose the Play Store, you yeah. lose Maps, you lose Gmail, you totally. lose all the sort of awesome, closed, proprietary yeah. Google apps that people want. I mean, yeah. remember when the iPhone, you know, when the iPhone didn't have Google Maps, I mean, I remember the nurses at the hospital saying like, well, it does, but it doesn't have Google Maps on it. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to upgrade, you know, uh, that, that would be a big, that would, that'd be a big risk yeah. right. uh, for them to fork it and, and to, and to, I yeah. mean, really it's the Google apps that you want. Android is great. Right. But there's also that, that whole suite of Google apps, which I think is really important. Absolutely. Um, well, Hey, why not fire up that? What would Andy say graphic for what, just one what, little, what would he say? What, what would Andy <laughs> say about Google stores? I think he said something like Google has no plans and we have nothing to announce. There you go. So not a whole lot to say so that's there. about the speculation on Google stores, on the retail yes, stores. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we so. talked about that last week. Uh, Andy Rubin shooting it down. That's what he does. See, uh, that smelled, that smelled like there will never be a tablet to me. I was like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we have no plans. Right. No, no nothing nothing store, to see here. Right. Nothing to see. Yeah. All right. Right. But, you know, I'm always looking for a reason to have his mouth open and closed like that while, while I pretend to be him. So there you go. Right. Andy Rubin says no stores. We'll see new stores by the end of the year, I'm sure. Exactly. But he did have something to say about Google I.O., didn't he? Yes. Well, Google I.O. registration uh, opens up March. It's March 13th at 7 a.m. Pacific. So Google I.O., place to be for Android Google fans. It's going to be May 15th to the 17th at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. This thing sells out really, really fast. Yeah. I, I went back and looked at the last few years. IO 2009, 90 days sold out. 2010, 50 days. 2011, 59 minutes. Last year, this sold out in 20 minutes. So on March 13th at 7 a.m. Pacific time, uh, just assume that you have about a 10-minute window to, to log in. Uh, you need a Google Plus account and you need a Google Wallet account to buy a ticket. So the tickets aren't cheap. They're they're 900 bucks for general attendees. Students can get one a ticket for 300 bucks. I think a lot of people rush for these tickets because you... Google basically showers you with 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 hardware, with new and interesting hardware when you go to when you go to I/O. Um, so it's part March of what 13th, you're paying for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's part of what you're paying for. So get your you know fire up your Google Wallet account, make sure that's all set up, and your Google yeah. Plus account. And I think last year they they had like I don't know it was like seven thousand queries, people trying to buy uh, tickets per second, and that in that first you know few minutes. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I I I I expect that the the sales thing will might go down or there just might be some slowness uh but set your alarms all right coast. so this is year three this would be year three for me and every year it comes around and every year i have the same oh i hope i get to go i right. have this like fear that it's not going to happen well, i still that's have cause, no cause, idea that's because we're second citizens like i said last year i found out like what the week before <laughs> yes it totally. was like i had applied for a press badge i got denied and then a week before they're like oh wait no we can fit you in and so so cross your fingers <laughs> totally we'll totally again, so yeah we'll i've totally got the press badge uh, fingers crossed myself yeah so we'll see what all right so, rant away yeah so a little we rant just wanted, you know I, I have a soapbox so we can use it and i feel like we need a ron's rant title now. now yeah but anyway but um so those of you following me on twitter might have saw this drama that i'm 
unfolded last night. But um, so last night I'm 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 on my way home. I'm on my commute and I go to Pocket Casts, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and I'm listening to a listen to a podcast. And all of a sudden I get this message saying, uh, "You have hit 10 gigabytes of data this month. Your uh, data will now be slowed down until February 27th, which is the end of my billing cycle." And I went, "What?" The reason why I went what is because I'm on an unlimited data plan, or so I thought. I'm with T-Mobile, so I immediately tried to download the T-Mobile My Account app, and I couldn't because I couldn't connect to the Play <laughs> oh, Store because the Play Store re timed out. Oh, you're so kidding me. So I waited until I waited until I got home. I got logged into my account, had some interesting conversations on Twitter with uh, T-Mobile Help, which are very very nice, and they try to be helpful. I give them that credit. Um, and then I called T-Mobile, and then I emailed with them, and basically this is what I found out is that um, I've been a customer since the G1. I'm on a classic unlimited unlimited plan, which basically gives you unlimited data, unlimited speeds, up to 10 gigabytes. At that point, they switch you to just unlimited data, but they slow you down. How slow? Well, I can run a speed test right now, um, but when I ran it last night, I was getting 56 kbps down. <laughs> So nice. I don't know if those it's of like you a modem. Old, yeah. yeah, I don't know if those of you who are old enough to remember, but that's dial-up speed. So um so we're gonna run a speed test while I'm talking. Here we here we go. You so. can spend unlimited time waiting for your stuff to download. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're gonna need all that time to so load that web page. So here we do the speed test. So I'm getting 148 milliseconds ping. Here we go. I'm getting about 60 down. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Is that a, is that oh, unbelievable? Wah, wah, wah. What's what's that? hysterical is that my upload is faster than my download now cuz watch this. <laughs> upload shoots up to about 120. <laughs> Kbps. Not even Mbps or maybe upload's not even working now. But anyway, so yeah, here we go. Okay, so it, seems, it looks like they've shaped the upload as well. Um so I, I, I lost it because I thought I'm on unlimited. So I say, so then one of the T-Mobile techs gets back to me and they say, oh, well, you probably want our new nationwide unlimited plan, which a lot of you have probably seen this. In fact, I saw the billboard when I got off the Muni last night, which I was like, they're just trolling me now. But so they have this new nationwide <laughs> unlimited, which is unlimited data, no caps, no limits. And I was like, yes, I want that. And so I'm looking on the website, look, and, and here's where the problem is. That unlimited plan has a little asterisk that says, does not include support for the hotspot or tethering. Uh, and so that's when I went, wait a minute. So I went back and I looked at my data speeds and here's what happened. Here's the forensics. Um, it looks like on a monthly basis, I use about four gig or so of data a, a, a month. So I've never hit this 10 gig before. This month, a couple of things happened. Number one, I'm addicted to the West Wing on, Net, on Netflix. And so uh, whereas I... I have usually listen to podcasts on my commute. I've been watching The West Wing on Netflix on my phone. Number two, my gym, where I also watch Netflix and I watch West Wing, the router was down for about four or five days. And so I was using my hotspot to feed to my tablet to watch The West Wing while I worked out. Number three, I went on a business trip and I was in a hotel in the suburbs of Atlanta with where the wireless was awful. And I got better speeds off my hotspot than I did on that. Combine all those together, I did about... Three gig of data on the hotspot app, about four gig on Netflix, and then the rest was my average usage. So moral of the story is T-Mobile does not want you to use your hotspot. And this is the quote they gave me. This is the exact quote they gave me when I said, wait a minute, let me get this straight. I said, I can have an unlimited account, but you're going to cap me at 10. Or I can have this unlimited account, but not use my hotspot. That makes no sense because the hotspot is a function of the phone, not a function of the service. And they said... At this time, our truly unlimited data, data feature cannot be added in conjunction with the mobile hotspot service. The reasoning behind this is that we are primarily a cell phone provider and not looking to move into an ISP capacity by providing unlimited data for multiple devices. Mm. Mm. <sighs> well, this was an unusual month. I mean, 10 gig is a lot. Yeah. I'm not judging, Ron. True. But Judging but, a little. But I mean, the, that's a lot. <laughs> no, true. And admittedly, the, a lot of it's the West Wing's fault. But, yeah. the, but the nature of my business is that if I don't get the data that I need... Well, yeah. two, my, my lessons are twofold. If I don't get the data I need, I switch to the hotspot because if I'm at a conference or whatever, I need to depend on it. Yep. Number two, this capping is so extreme that other than making phone calls and text messages, this phone is useless. Yeah. I haven't been or able- Or connecting to, a Wi-Fi wherever every, you happen to be. Every, yeah, yeah. Uh, using a Wi-Fi is fine. I can't yeah. load Instagram. I can't load the Google Play Store. I can't, at that level of speed, it hamstrings you so much that if this was, uh, if it's gonna, it's gonna kick back in tomorrow, but I would have been dead. Right. Like if this was yeah. if this hit me earlier in the month, I would have been like impossible. 
So there you go. That's my rant. So read the fine print, understand your services, use your data usage uh, meter. I've reset mine now to go to set an alarm to go off when I hit five gigs. So I know, okay, I'm halfway there. Um, and you know, finish the West wing. That's my lesson. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, technically it is unlimited, right? It's a myth. It's, it's not. I mean, that... they shouldn't use the word unlimited. Yeah. I mean, That's... it should always be unlimited except when yeah. you yeah. hit a limit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when, when I first kind of saw this and then we were talking a little bit ago, I was like, why use unlimited when it's not? It's like, well, I guess technically it is. Well, no, they it's, just it's throttle you down so, so it's slowly. Yeah, it's never it's go unlimited data, but yeah. not unlimited speed. Right. That's the thing. And so right. they're they're truly unlimited. The fact that you have in your in your marketing, you need to name something truly unlimited know, right. just speaks like, to the just, fact that you're lying. No. Like you're lying. <laughs> and like now we know. And so and like uh, so whatever. So that said, uh, mobile carriers. Uh, I'm on the market. So if you have a better offer, get in touch with me, and maybe uh, I'll move. But uh, as of right now, I'm stuck with T-Mobile, who uh, seem to hate. Me. So, there you go. <laughs> well, best of luck with falsely unlimited or the truly unlimited. Uh, just don't say unlimited. Just say it's a 10 gig data plan. Just say, make it clear. Right. Don't call it unlimited. For years, I've been under the misconception that it was unlimited. It's yeah. like finding out I was adopted. I However, mean, like, it's like, the, it's on, like, the, on the same. <laughs> token for years it has been unlimited True. this is the one yes. time that you run oh, into and it. i didn't even tell you the kicker was that halfway through the business trip i got hit with a with a they interrupted the the hotspot usage with an upsell message and they realized for whatever reason there was a glitch in their system and i i guess they charge now for the hot hotspot service and i hadn't been paying that and so in the middle of this business trip they hit me and i got to pay 15 a month now so mm -hmm. I'm paying even more. So I'm paying like $150 a month now to like have the privilege of using the hotspot and then be limited by what I can do, by what I can do with it. Did they interrupt the West Wing for that? Yes. No, I'm stuck <gasps> in the middle of an episode. I have no idea. Oh, so Matthew wrong. Perry just joined the cast. How am I supposed to? What am I supposed to do with this? Wrong. This is so, wrong. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was, uh, <laughs> that's that's yeah. the, the West Wing. That's low, bro. But so, and, so, and, so, and somebody in the chat room just said, but why, why don't they want to be an ISP? Why are these phone companies so? Well, and they obviously do because they sell you a hotspot service. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. They obviously do want to be an ISP because well, no, they no, sell actually, it to you in a different plan. Actually, I don't think yeah. they. I don't think they like the hotspot service, but. The, the fact that the hotspot is a functionality of Android and not of them, so they have to deal with it. So they just so it took them this long to figure out how to build a fence around it, and I'm just I'm I'm annoyed. And I'm not going to go to Verizon because they're CDMA, you know. So I'm looking. Well, at, Verizon you know, doesn't offer. I've I've run into this with Verizon where if it, the next time that I upgrade my phone, um, I, I'll right. hit the same cap, and, and and the next time that I upgrade my phone, I'll be away from my unlimited plan. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, anyway. unless unless you choose not to upgrade with a subsidy. Yeah. Anyway, so then you're not renewing your contract. I'll say if there's yes. any entrepreneurs out there who want to make a cell phone service that's aimed at power users like all of us, I bet you you'd make a lot of money because mm. I would gladly pay $100 to never have to worry Ting. about this. Yep. So. Ting. <laughs> so, true. Just saying. All right. I'm sorry. I'm um, hey, why don't we thank sponsor of today's show? Huh? Come, come a little closer. I've got something to tell you. Uh, as a guy, this is a little personal, but as a guy, I don't, you know, I, I forget to buy things uh, <laughs> until it's a little too late. And suddenly, you know, all my socks have holes in them. And uh, it's just kind of embarrassing. Our sponsor, uh, manpacks.com, might be able to help you. I actually have a manpack down here. It's basically, it's totally brand new and has not been opened by Leo Laporte already earlier today. Not in the least. Um, manpacks is essentially a service where you can go to the site. You can log in if you go to manpacks.com slash twit. Uh, there's a little deal I'll tell you about here in a second. There's Leo in his manpack. <laughs> there he is. It's, <laughs> I kind of feel weird opening Leo's manpack right now, but I, I will do it to show, to show it off. Uh, you basically, you go to the site and you select a bunch of items that you think would be very handy for you to receive. And you're going to receive these items uh, pretty much right away the very first time. Let's, let's see here. Leo has some uh, socks, some really nice, comfortable pairs of socks here. Um, some, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this with somebody else's underwear, but there we are. Uh, just, just saying, uh, it's just, all about Android man. after dark. Th those of you that are just listening, you might want to tune in. So, you know, this isn't as weird as it may sound. Um, and then there's just a whole lot of other items in here. Uh, shampoo, uh, items from the grooming lounge, shampoo, conditioner, uh, where <laughs> beard destroyer, shaving cream, wow. uh, Fresh balls. <laughs> Just saying, there's a lot of stuff in there that you might want. Um, it's really called fresh balls. It is. Prevents wetness. Hey, you know, 
It's, it's, hey, guys wow. got to do... It's the solution for men. A lot to stay manly. It's aluminum-free. Um, manpacks.com. It's actually very, very cool. If you go there and you don't want... You know, you just don't think about buying these things, um, you can sign up for the service. And essentially, this stuff will just be sent to you. As I said, the first time you go through and pick these items, they're going to be sent to you automatically, and you're going to get a package in the mail very soon after with some cool stuff in it that you select. And then every three months, you just kind of wait for it. Your next pack is going to arrive, and uh, you know it's going to have more of the things that you've already selected. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, if you don't change it, you'll you'll just kind of get more of what you've you've gotten, and you can kind of refresh your supply. So um, there's a lot of really cool stuff in there for guys. Check it out. We have two exclusive offers for Twit listeners. If you go to manpacks.com/twit, uh, you can you can get ten dollars off your first order of thirty dollars or more, or you can buy a fifty dollar gift card and uh, pay forty dollars for that. So you get ten dollars off that fifty dollar gift card. It's great for guys. Great for, um, you know, partners of guys that are like, what do I get my guy? Well, get a Man Packs. So go to manpacks.com slash twit and get started today. And we thank Man Packs so much for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Thank you. Uh, pretty cool stuff. All right. Let's dive into Mobile World Congress hardware. So the inevitable has happened. We knew it was coming. Uh, talk about the momentum of Samsung. Uh, yeah. At Mobile World Congress, Samsung announced the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. It's official. It exists. An 8-inch Galaxy Note. Um, it's the Galaxy Note 8.0, actually. Um, it's right, it's 1.6 gigahertz uh, uh, Exynos 4 quad, 1280 by 800 display, um, HSPA, Android Jelly Bean 4.1.2. Uh, this is it. It has happened. It is a tablet that has phone functionality. That's right. It's a phone that has tablet functionality. That's right. I don't know what it is. It's enormous. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the well, as we predicted last year, they broke the seven inch barrier. I'm I'm continually amazed at how this doesn't weird me out. Like I would, I don't know if I necessarily need it myself, but I know there are people that this is perfect for. You've been eased into it. You've been eased into it. I've been saying forever that they, it, that it's a tablet with phone functionality. That's how we got to start looking at it. Yeah. It's not a you know forget the phablet or you know pad phone or or we'll get that later. But um you know it's a tablet that that you can use as a phone. Right. It might be the only device that you have in your arsenal, and yeah. why not have that device also have the capability of making phone calls? I think it makes perfect sense. I don't. Yeah, it like is I bigger, said, it's not for everybody. You're not going to see business, you know, Wall Street you know, business guys on Wall Street walking down the sidewalk with one of these big things hefted up to their ear. Uh, but there are certainly users that this is perfect for that don't want to have to carry around two devices and, you know, and prefer I, to work on the tablet. I, and I'm surprised it doesn't come with a, a Bluetooth earpiece or something like that to kind of say, hey, you could hold it up to your face like a weirdo, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So yeah. wait, wait, wait. You can? You do hold this thing up to your face? Yep. You can, yes. Uh, I just assumed that it came with a headset. Nope. nope. That's crazy. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Um, now I'm being judgy again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know what the next step is, right? You know what the next step is, right? It's, it's, it's it, this. Yep. Do it's it. the 10-inch. On your face. On your face. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that feels pretty weird. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> a little weird. It's going to happen. It's I'm crazy. telling you, it's going to happen because, it, you know, that might be the only device that you want to carry around with you. It's a pretty large device. But, hey, people carry around their laptops with them everywhere they go. It's not... Too crazy I mean, to and think. it's interesting yeah. to see a lot of the, the a lot of the discussion on uh, coverage of this has pretty much called it out. It is a tablet that is also a phone. It is not. Yeah. This, this is not a phone that is also a tablet. Um, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty I mean, much. That's, exactly and that's it. the right way to describe it. So, uh, I, mean, I, I although I am surprised though that the the headset isn't sort of the default. You, like phone usage that they're showing off. Like I'm, I'm shocked that it doesn't come with one. I still say, um. I still say they make the, they put a mic in the S Pen. They sell a little yeah. earpiece, and oh. then you've got it. I would, I would be all over that. That's pretty cool. I yeah. But, so you'd um, hold the S Pen up to your. Side well, no, of your you just face. hold, you just hold the S Pen like like a microphone, and you just, mm -hmm. or you know, or, or as yeah. you're writing or as you're using it, and it just picks up. It's just although, a really good microphone. Although really, yeah, the S Pen should also be a phone. Yeah, yeah make, that'd be pretty make sweet. That, yeah, just make it a yeah, just put it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Look, it's all weird no matter how you slice it. Yeah, so. it's weird. <laughs> um, continuing in Samsung's barrage of Android dominance, um, they also announced uh, the Samsung HomeSync, which is a set-top box device 
uh, that's got a, a one terabyte hard drive and it's running Jelly Bean, um, assuming Android 4.1, and it is basically a set-top box that uh, becomes your home base for all of your Galaxy products and is really kind of aimed at, at taking on Google TV. So, you know, we've seen other um, manufacturers, we've seen some manufacturers embrace Google TV. We've seen others develop their own. I know we're looking at some stuff out of CES that wasn't running the Google TV version of Android. Now here Samsung comes in with uh, not only a set-top by set -top box that's running Android, but a pretty formidable one with a huge hard drive, um, Wi-Fi, Ethernet access, um, and, you know, and a direct kind of tie-in to all the Galaxy products that they have out there. So uh, maybe Google does have something to be worried about with this say, Android Maybe dominance. Google should be nervous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, Samsung has a lot of Google TV on their smart TVs, so it's yes, not like sure. they're you know totally yeah. bypassing Google TV. Yeah. This is a device that's running Jelly Bean. Um, yeah. But but more and more, I'm really curious. Like I, I don't have one of these devices, and I'm more and more on the fence of if I was to buy one. Do I get one like this? It seems well. I mean, like it may have a little bit more potential. And this one is curious because it's you know it's running a 1.7 gigahertz dual core processor. It's got a gig of memory. It's got additional 8 gig of flash storage. Um, it's got Wi-Fi. It's got Ethernet. It supports uh, 1080p HDMI out with HDCP. Supports USB 3, optical out. So it's like it's a nice box. They didn't show the interface. Mm -hmm. So you got to wonder yeah. how baked, how fully baked is it? You know, so at this point, I think this is a, for me as a TV enthusiast, this is a watch. Um, it's not a, oh my right, God, you right. need to get this. I'm going to keep an eye on this product. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting to see, see they're trying to position it as the hub of your Galaxy products. They're trying to build that Galaxy brand. What happens when I don't have the Galaxy? Mm -hmm. So that that's uh, interesting as well. But if I was in the market for a Galaxy, and Lord knows I need one after I shattered my Google, my Nexus, uh, you can't see the shatter, but it's no. broken. Um, uh it is the other inevitable thing has happened is that uh, Samsung confirmed the Galaxy S4, and there's going to be an event in March on March 14th at 7 p.m. in New York City, um, where they'll be unveiling the next uh, Samsung Galaxy phone, the Galaxy 4 IV uh, Roman numeral 4, ready so for the show. Expect the the rumors leading up to that event and leaks oh, and it's all gonna that. Oh, it's going to be hot and heavy. Yeah, so fly. Yeah, although Samsung, yeah. as of late, has been pretty good at keeping a lid on that kind of stuff. So we'll see. Um, yeah. So Samsung, Mobile World Congress dominated. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot, a lot yeah. of stuff. Although there's another, there's another tablet with phone functionality that got announced at Mobile World Congress. Asus, formerly Asus, from what I understand, <laughs> announced the uh, the phone pad, which is official now. It's a seven inch tablet with phone functionality. It'll be uh, two hundred forty nine dollars. It's got uh, 3G data and voice using a new Intel Atom processor, sixteen gigabytes internal storage, micro SD card slot. Um, uh, let's see, sorry, uh, under 7-inch 1280 by 800 display with 10-point multi-touch, and it'll be available in Europe for uh, the UK for 179 uh, pounds sterling, 219 Europe, uh, euro, excuse me, and there will be, the US dollar price will be 249, but we don't have a confirmation date of when it will be available here in the United States. So that's the 7-inch phone pad. There's also a 5-inch pad phone, pad phone infinity, also by Asus, <laughs> uh, running Android 4.2. This is a 5-inch 1080p display, quad core 1.7 gigahertz snapdragon 600 processor 2 gig of ram 3264 gig of storage 13 megapixel camera um yeah this is uh infinity still docks to a 10 one uh inch tablet frame called the infinity station uh this station has a 1920 by 1200 super super ips display same 400 nit brightness as, as the phone itself. The station has its own uh, 5,000 mAh battery alongside the phone's own lithium polymer cell. This will be in the UK for 7.99 British pounds sterling. So, yes, big slabs of electronics with phone capabilities I love, built in. I love how Asus <laughs> seems to not have any rules. Well, they're just right. like, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just, just let's just everything. make the phone go in the tablet, and it will be, you know, like it's just like just kind of got to give them big props. And we'll make for a that. five incher, and then we'll make a station to turn it into a ten incher. Hey, whatever, right. you get everything like, in one thing. I kind of like Why the not? insanity of it. I kind yeah. of, I kind of. Samsung yeah. plays around with a lot of different things, yeah. but Asus, no. Asus, right now it's Asus. Asus, Asus, Asus okay. yeah. Asus is like building Frankenstein. You know, they're they're, they're like, I've got this bad idea. Check this out. Here's their and tagline. We'll call one the phone pad and one the pad phone. Right. Here's their marketing tagline: Asus. No one's as crazy as we are. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, we'll try anything. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, in not 
quite so out there news. Uh, how about a seven inch uh, tablet that doesn't have a phone? Wah, wah. It's uh, the. So, that's so 20, 2012. I know. Wow. HP yeah. coming out of the gate. Uh, HP Slate 7, uh, which has a pretty nice price $169 available in April. It's seven inch display at 1024 by 600. Not the best resolution, especially when you compare it to the Nexus 7. Uh, 1.6 gigahertz dual core Cortex A9 processor, one gig of RAM, eight gig storage. Micro SD slot, three megapixel rear facing camera. Uh, oh, they've integrated Beats Audio into there to get that little logo on there. And it's running stock Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. So, stock, that's a plus. I always like to see that. Uh, but 169 that's a pretty good price. And H is HP, is a, a, HP is a brand that people trust, sure. that they recognize. And I, I think walking into Best Buy and seeing an HP tablet, I think they'll move units. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it doesn't have to be the greatest tablet either in the world. Uh, Although I'm concerned that Android Central's uh, headline is like, how can a tablet that feels so good be so not good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's true>. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Um, and so moving on, finally, uh, last year at Google I.O., we got uh, the world of Google Glass introduced to us thanks to an insane Sergey Brin. Um, and it's been developing a little more and more. And the thing that I've been waiting for the most has been what does the interface look like? What is it like to wear one? And Google finally gave us this point of view in a new video that shows what it's like to, to use Google Glass. And also they expand the pre-orders and uh, are making it more potentially available to folks. Um, and I got to see after watching this video um, – I'm a little underwhelmed. I thought yeah. it'd be I thought it'd be cooler. I mean, it's pretty neat. Don't get me wrong. But so here in the video, for those on audio, you, you're listening out on this. But on the video, you see in the upper right hand corner, there. This is the point of view of someone who's wearing glass. So there in that upper right hand corner, you see the time, and then you see little actions come up. And uh, basically in the audio, they have people they speak they they speak it to trigger it. I don't know, Chad, if we want to play it with the audio or. You ready? Right there. Okay, glass. Take a picture. Last, take a picture. I don't know. I think it's pretty neat. What I, I just thought I don't know what I expected it to be, but actually, when I look at it, it it if this is the way it actually is, I see out of it more than I think I expected it would be. Yeah. I expected it would be a lot more kind of monochrome, small not well, as I useful. It, I, I feel like you see a lot up there. I thought it would be translucent like this, but like this, the, the menu, when you say, okay, glass, and then it pulls up a menu, yeah. like it looks kind of Microsoft-y to me. Yeah. You know, mm. and so and so that's why I was like, oh, like the, the maps, this is what I thought it would be like with the maps, where I, I want almost more like AR, you know, like an augmented reality yeah. kind of scenario, you know, th than, than just, you know, showing me what I'm already looking at. You know, like that's what some a lot of it does, like with the camera stuff and with the hangout stuff. It's showing you what you're broadcasting. And I don't want to see double. Well, but if uh, you're recording something, I mean, it's the same when you're looking through your it, phone though. to, to yeah. video, you know, take yeah. a video or whatever. Yeah. I mean, but, but you, so you don't want it to be transparent? I mean, no, I, I, I do want, want it to be transparent. I do want it to be transparent. I just don't want to look like Microsoft. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Google Glass, stop being Microsoft. <laughs> So wait, what, I'm confused. What do you think is Microsofty about this? The sort of boxy that right there, uh, the, the OK tiles? Glass Google and the text. It looks like the it looks like the Zune um, the Zune navigation. But it kind of looks nowy as well. Look, yeah, it, like does. it looks now. very nowy. You see right here with the with the jellyfish. That that you see this looks pretty cool. And a text message from somebody with their photo. Like that's what I would like to see. I don't know. It's just that I got a little. I, I, I don't know what I expected to see, but I just yeah. thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I thought it would look cooler, but we'll see. I want to see what people develop with it. That's what I want to see. I want to see how flexible is it for open um, development and how open for changes and changing the interface yeah. and things like that. So, well, and and I imagine you know Glass is a big uh, a big initiative for Google. Obviously, yeah. now is a really big initiative, and this you're just going to see direct kind of so, ties yeah. into that. It's the perfect kind of delivery mechanism for all of that now information. I think. So yeah, and that's exciting. And apparently, the the development of them is ahead of schedule. Um, and they're going to be uh, purchasable by the end of 2013 for less than $1,500. So if you want to play in the Google Glass world, you can. I, I know I'm still. I just want to get it. I ho I'm hoping at I/O I can get it on my head, and then once I have it, then I'll. You know me. I'll probably be like, it's amazing, and I need to have one. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure. probably a sucker. I saw that video and I was like, oh, yeah, geez, like yeah. I want. I want this. I yeah. won't really want to try this. Yeah. Totally. I can't wait for one of us to actually have, you know, get it in the house, have 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 the experience with it. I know Leo has it on order. I know that because he has my 
The because one that you, I, you ordered it for The him. one that I signed up for while I was there, and I was like, I can't afford $1,500 for these here. Leo, I'm sure you want them. And he said, absolutely. So so I know we're going to get our chance to, to take yeah. a look at it. Looking forward to that. Uh, real quick, I wanted to uh, answer an email here from Jose J- J- wow. Jacobo. There, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. Hey, I just wanted to give you a heads up on Shifty Jelly's Pocket Cast version 4 update. Should be live in the Play Store in about two hours. It actually is live in the Play Store now. Hopefully just in time for your show. Um, and he he had written to me saying he, he wanted to, you know, make a podcasting app featuring Twit stuff. And I was like, well, when, when you do it, you know, send it to me. He says, uh, after looking at this, I might not need to anymore. They've really redesigned uh, the, the app. And I mean... Po- uh, Pocket Cast, just as it was, was a great app. And now they've really kind of uh, put more of a focus on the, on design. They have a really cool feature, which is cross-device syncing. Uh, so really, if you're yeah. signed in on, on your multiple devices and you're listening to a podcast in one place and then you go to the other one, it'll pick up where you left off. I tested it out earlier, and I don't think we have time to really show it right now, but uh, it worked seamlessly, and it was great. They also um, totally worked on their tablet support, which was something that yeah. they were lacking. And actually, I can just show that real quick. I have it loaded on this tablet here. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> I know. I logged oh. in. The very first thing I saw was uh, all about Android on the front. Um, yeah, they they hit me up on Twitter, and you know they're, they're just big fans of the show. We've had them on the show before, uh, so they're super supportive, and obviously that's awesome. And it uh, looks awesome. Awesome. It looks yeah, great. Yeah, everything yeah, looks, looks really great. Beautiful. Going to podcasts. There's the episode that I downloaded. Um, I was syncing between different devices and testing it out um, a little bit earlier. But, yeah, you kind of get the full interface. It works really well on the tablet. And, uh, as well, it looks great on the phone. So, big props to those guys. Uh, Pocket Cast 4 is out. Check it out in the Play Store. Uh, you will not be disappointed. It's a great podcast app. That's for sure. Speaking of apps, let's dive into apps. So sad, sad story yeah, about this, Falcon, Falcon Pro. This one oh, hurts so a little sad. bit. <laughs> yeah, beloved, beloved Twitter client for Android. Uh, Falcon Pro hit Twitter's client uh, user token limit. So uh, Twitter made an announcement that their new API 1.1 had a kind of new set of rules. And part of those rules was that Twitter clients could only get clients that sort of reproduce the same functionality of Twitter's official apps had this ceiling of 100,000 100, user tokens. So only each app, each client can only have 100,000 users and Falcon Pro hit that limit. So that means that if you purchase Falcon Pro right now and you download it, you can't sign into Twitter because right. not not because Falcon Pro is broken, but because Twitter is isn't granting any more user tokens to new users. Uh, so this this stinks. This stinks for everybody. It stinks for Falcon Pro users. It stinks for the developer because this kind of put the developer in a weird pickle where it was like, well, I want to keep the app up in the Play Store so that I can push out updates to my existing users, but I actually don't want anyone new to buy it. Not that I don't want them to, but it won't work for them. Right. Uh, so he did something kind of clever. He changed the price to uh, to the, the maximum amount of money that you can charge for an app, $132.13. <laughs> That's a U.S. dollars right now. So if you go to Falcon Pro for Twitter in the Play Store right now, I mean, there's a giant message, you know, it's kind of attention, please read this, explaining the situation, uh, you know, and saying like, look, I, I raised the price so I don't get any new users, but I'd like to keep pushing out updates and make make the features that I want to make for the for the 100,000 people who did get tokens, who did did get to use it. So... This stinks. I really feel for this for the developer. Um, I'm I'm sad because I think Fal- Falcon Pro clearly does some things that the official Twitter app on Android does not do. Uh, my beef is with notifications. Other people's beefs are with you know built-in browsers or whatever. I mean, th- you know, when you have a third-party client, they often will kind of embed media that the official client doesn't, or they do something kind of a, just a little tweak. The developer petitioned Twitter and said, "Please, please let me have more tokens." And Twitter said, "Look, you're, you know, this is all this functionality is we provide this already in the official app. Sorry." And they said, "No." So, uh, it's, so it's a very Apple approach to things. It is. You know, we it we is. we have an app that does this, so we don't need to make your app. And so you don't need to make your app. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. So I'm worried about. I like Falcon Pro, but a Carbon is kind of my new like Twitter for for Android love. So I'm worried about the future for Carbon and just third party apps in general. You know, when when Twitter made this announcement, I was on iOS at the time, and I thought, well, this makes sense. You know, the, the official apps are great. They let you do pretty much anything that you want to do. I 
was wrong. The official app on Android no. is just is not as good as no, the one on not. iOS. My, my, like I said, my beef is with notifications. The notifications are not there. There aren't um, rich notifications if they, in, mul in multiples. Like at some point, if you have more than one, it just goes new interactions, yeah. uh, which is way less useful. And uh, so I'm sad about Falcon Pro. Uh, I hope I don't know. I don't know what I hope. I kind of hope that Twitter will, will reconsider. Um, but I guess this is, you know, this kind of lowering the hammer will, will be a chilling effect. No one else will make Twitter clients on Android. No, which is why would you? And it's not, You're it's cut not. off at 100,000. And this is this is a specific example of a very popular, yeah. fast yeah. pay, you know, fast moving app hitting that that limit earlier. There is qu there is a little bit of question as far as how they hit that limit so fast. Whether you know they had I think something like 40,000 actual paying users. Yeah, there was some rumor of bots yeah. and like and some like that where well, like, if you or, look or pirated at yeah. the installs it's so low yeah right it's not a hundred thousand right so so people have pirated or sideloaded or got it elsewhere uh, also uh, so the developer saying if you got falcon pro and you don't use it go in your right. twitter account and revoke release access it. like release, release your token because yeah. that will give someone else who actually does want to use it a chance to do so if one person uses a twitter account and signs into multiple accounts is that is would that potentially be three user tokens if it's this, it's it's per user per app. So if you sign in with one username into an app, no matter how many devices, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same because it's, it's being controlled by Twitter. Right, yeah, but if yeah. I have Jason Howell and Android Show, oh, those, and, those are yeah. individual oh, those tokens. Are tokens. So, yeah, wow. Those are tokens, so you're a part yeah. of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I think, way I think to go. Hey, no. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but you also paid for the app. Yeah. You yeah, know, right. it's like like seeing seeing that their install base is less than than half of the user tokens, and they've already hit their limit. I mean, there's there's no way that all of those people have two Twitter yeah. accounts. No, no, right. you're right. And, right. and it's important to know that this isn't just Android. This is across every platform. So, like, I saw friends complaining about Tweetbot, um, which yeah. is an, a popular iOS one. They hit the limit as well too, and they're they're in in the same situation. So, um, right. it's unfortunate, but. Release the token. Yeah, well, there, there's our show title. Release the token. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, the, the the copies that didn't get sold. I think the developer. I was looking at that their Twitter feed. I think what he's talking about doing is creating a new app with a new set of app tokens and, and yeah. enforcing DRM and just making like building in a lot more security to make it harder for people to mm. not purchase the app. Uh, but you know, his point was like, when Twitter figures out that I'm just made two apps, they'll shut the other one down. Too. Yeah, yeah, Twitter right. doesn't like that. Um, and I mean, if you're how do I phrase this? If you're a developer that can obviously create a great app, maybe at this point you're like, all right, I was stung by Twitter once before. Do I right. really want to go there again? Yeah. Like right. create a different app and make that one awesome and there's no limits and you do well. I'm yeah. pretty yep. certain these the, the folks that made this can do something else. I guess the problem is coming up with a great idea, right. but um, they've, right. uh, they've obviously proven that they can make an app that people love. So. Mm -hmm. I also just realized that the user token thing doesn't quite apply with Falcon because you couldn't have multiple users. Good point. Yeah, actually. That oh, was one wow. of the big problems with, yeah. with Falcon yeah. is you could only have one user. So okay. see, I'm not the problem. Yeah. I, w I really want to know how many they sell at $132, though. Uh, you know that someone's going to buy it. <laughs> you think? S yeah, somebody who doesn't know that it's going to, yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but so bad news for Falcon Pro, but good news for one of our favorite apps. A much, much needed update to the all-star application, which I have here on my tablet, known as, is it time for a... That's right. Um, the, the, app, the app that tells you whether it's time for All About Android. Nuking Nukem, yep. flowing the Flowmaster, generating reports, upgrading hardware, managing todo.txt, listening to Yellow Gold, <laughs> doing complex stuff, correcting errors. It's time for All About Android. And the much needed update includes Gina to the fold. <laughs> right. So there you go. I'm so, in the change log, there baby. You go. So it's legit. <laughs> it in is the change in the log. change log. <laughs> so welcome. It is now official. So, <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I'm happy that this time when we showed it off during the show, it worked. It worked. Yeah. yeah. Well, we found that bug. It's all part of the development yeah, process. Yeah. Well, it plays the song. Song, which is the song is awesome, like the AA song. It plays it. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, really, it's a top tier app. Um, I think we're all, you know, kind of waiting for a little hollow redesign. Yeah, uh, that would be you'll, nice. You'll get there. Yep. Yeah. You'll get there, B Woogie. We really appreciate all the work you put into it. I liked one of them was Sabotage. There, there you go. Oh, I know that song. Um, yeah. My yeah. fa my favorite one was sabotaging iPad today, which I thought was uh, interesting. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. iPad today sabotaged <laughs> exactly. us today. Yeah, yeah. It's the other way around. Yeah. All right, we don't have a whole lot of time, so let's jump into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. No. Android Arena. Boom! 
Uh, so last week we had three apps, 7x7, Clock Plus, Daydream, and And Made Share. Uh, all I, didn't, I haven't even looked. Yeah, I hadn't even looked either. Uh, it I looks like And Made so Share. Bad. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of blame myself partially for that because I didn't have your demo running very well. <laughs> no, I apologize about that. No, not your fault. Not your fault. I feel it, like I either like win really well or lose really. That's, that's usually how it how it goes. That's either goes. yeah, you either win big or lose big. That's yeah, how the arena exactly. goes. Yeah. <laughs> so I had made share in first with forty five percent, seven by seven second at thirty three percent, clock plus daydream third place at twenty one percent. All great apps though, so you should check them out if you haven't already. So. Gina, that means you go first. I get to go first. And this okay. time I will I promise I will try and show it off better. <laughs> so my app this week, I was thinking about Google I.O. and just conferences in general and how you have tons of conversations with lots of different people. And maybe you come home with like a stack of, you know, business cards that you toss somewhere. I never look at them again. I'm terrible. I know I should scan them or do something with them. I never do. And a bunch of notes that people that you want to follow up with or, or whatever, and you never do it. So this is why I chose this app. My app this week is called Evernote Hello. It is free. And, and yes, it is connected to Evernote. It's one of Evernote's apps. But Evernote Hello is, is basically like a personal CRM kind of app. Uh, it's a way for you to keep track of meetings that you have with people and their contact information. And you guessed it, it kind of all syncs to your Evernote account. Uh, but this but this app, Evernote Hello, has a specialized inf interface that's like people-centric. So unlike the just straight, straight up Evernote notes, um, uh, app. So you go into Evernote Hello and you can add a person. You, you tap on the big, big plus plus button and then you say, okay, you know what? I want I want to hand my phone to somebody and have them enter their information. I want to add somebody from my contacts um, or I just want to enter it myself. And it's nice. A hello connects to LinkedIn. So you can pull somebody's picture from LinkedIn. You can get, get their Twitter handle and their Facebook account. And then it has this concept of encounter. So if Ron and I were going to get together in San Francisco, I'd be like, hey, you know, a new encounter with Ron, which sounds a little weird, but I guess really? they just didn't want to use the name, the word meeting. Hey, Gina, um, let's, let's have an encounter. Let's, let's have an encounter. <laughs> let's just call it a meeting. <laughs> Let me have a meeting. Um, <laughs> I got you. I got her. <laughs> we had an encounter. It sounds very, very serious. Um, so you can leave notes and say, hey, I want to follow up with this person about this. And uh, it's got this really nice interface. It's, this is kind of tiles of just, just photos of people who you've met. Uh, there are a couple of features here I probably wouldn't use. For example, I'm probably not going to meet somebody at a conference and then say, hey, can I take a picture of you uh, just to put into my phone? That's a little weird. But luckily, you can pull pictures from social networks and things like that. So you, that's when you get those pictures. Uh, so yeah, so you can enter multiple uh, encounters or meetings, notes from your meetings. You can link related notes. So if you take notes at Evernote during uh, a talk, for example, and then afterwards you have an encounter, quote unquote, with the speaker, they'll be those notes will be automatically linked. So you'll have this nice record of what, what happened and who you talked to. So it feels like this is a lot, a lot more useful than business cards and will make me uh, better at following up. Nice, Jason. Jason just took a nice photo of himself and he's going to show up in the, in the tile layout. Um, just seems like an easy way to keep track of people, kind of like personal CRM without it being too too businessy. So that's it. Evernote Hello. It is free and you need an Evernote account obviously to use it. And it syncs all to your Evernote, uh, your, your regular Evernote account notebooks as well. Yeah. And it, I mean, it synced location based on where we met. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You so don't like even have to think about it. You're like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I, like how, I like how the hand hand the phone to somebody else and it's like a neat little questionnaire. It's like, what is your mm -hmm. name? What do you, where do you work? And like, mm -hmm. it, it makes it kind of cool. I don't know about, uh, you know, if I would use that or not, but it's, it's an interesting approach. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I love Evernote. The folks at Evernote are really smart. So Yeah, they uh, are. They are. It's a really nice interface, and uh, I think it'll help me remember people. It's really good for just business trips and things where you're meeting. You know, you have a few different meetings a day and talking with people, you know, new people for the first time. I good way to keep track. If I was single, I'd use it to keep track of my encounters. <laughs> Your encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Which you could, as opposed to conferences, it could be it could be a good dating app. There you go. Evernote, there's, use the hold, meeting. Just hold, say meeting. There's a, a, there's hold a on, meeting. let me take let me take a picture of you. All right. <laughs> I'm adding this to my there's encounters. There's another uh, episode title: Keeping Track of Encounters. <laughs> so you'll have casual encounters and business encounters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> uh, all about Android after dark. There we go. All right, cool. Evernote, hello. I'm stoked that you chose that one because that was one that I saw come up a while back, and I, I'm, I'm horrible with, with names and you know all that as well. So he's been. I He's been calling me Tom for uh, months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every time I encounter Ron, I call him a, a different, <laughs> different name. Different name. <laughs> so, 
Uh, cool. Evernote, hello. Check it out in the Play Store. Ron, you are up next. I am up next. Uh, so I found a cool little app. Uh, for those of you who are really into news and really into um, reading articles on the web and things like that, I discovered this app called News Cover. Um, and if you uh, look at it, it's kind of a play on words between the word news and discover. News um, discover. And one of the interesting things about this, so basically it's a news aggregator, and um, it takes in a whole bunch of uh, different sources uh, from around the web, and it gives you news. Currently right now they just have um, uh, news, sports, technology, um, business, and style. So I'll just look at the news. And it just gives you the latest kind of news of what's going on. You can look at what's most recent down here, or I can switch over to what's popular. Um, and uh, it kind of is a good way to stay in touch. But where, what made this catch my eye were two things. Is that one is that the interface on it is really interesting. So if you, you know, I scanned all these, okay, I want to see more news. It uses the page curl kind of, you know, pullback, you know, kind of animation there. And it does in different, you know, very ebook kind of style way where I can fold the page and I can scroll through the news that way, which is interesting. I can pull up from the bottom and you know do that. Um, and then uh, the second thing with the interface that I thought was interesting was that there are different views. You can uh, long tap on the news cover um, uh, logo and choose whether you want to see the full article or just see some detail or see like a list format. But what's interesting is that if you don't want to do that, you can actually pinch and zoom and that triggers this interesting, which is hard to see because my big fat hand is, is in the way, but you see this interesting kind of thing. So there's the full detail. And there's the there's the the some detail and there's the list format, so it's using the pinch and zoom in a way that I've never seen before in terms of inter interface. Yeah, which is no neat. kidding. Now on top of that, once you go into an article, my one complaint is that it doesn't pull it up in like an RSS reader st style. It actually pulls in the page from the source. So if you're going to a blog that has lots of ads and things like that, it's not filtering those out. Um, but that was my first kind of complaint. But for some of the sites, you get a little button up here that says reader, and it will slide over to a reader format if the site has RSS easily enabled. Not all the sites do, so that's kind of frustrating in that regard. Um, but that option is there, so you can filter out all the ads and go through. Um, but as you read an article, there's a bunch of different actions that you could take. You could say, I'm interested. So I'm going to say, I'm interested in this. You could say, I want to read it later. You see it does that little zoom thing. Um, you can look for related articles. So I'm interested in this topic, and it will give me a bunch of top uh, articles that are related to this topic, which is neat. Um, and it gives news, it gives video, and then related noise is that once, you know, and I just installed this today, but once you uh, connect your Facebook and your Twitter, it'll start pulling up social chatter and that sort of thing. Um, but after you look at an article and you either tell it that you're interested or say Mark has read, that starts feeding the personalization aspect of it. So now, not only do I have a read later section, so these are the articles that I chose to read later. So it's kind of like you can scan through the um, scan through the headlines, say, okay, I want to read that one later, I want to read that one later, something I do a lot because I'm busy during the day, I don't have time to read it. Um, but then, and this is where it gets really neat, the more you use it and the more it learns about you, it starts giving you curated news for you so that essentially anyone's news cover is different from anyone else's. So Jason's news cover or Gina's news cover would be different from mine based off what we're interested in. Although I imagine they might be similar because we're interested in a lot of the same things. Um, <laughs> Maybe a few Android things in there yeah. probably. Yeah. But in the, um, in the uh, Google Play Store page, it says it, it starts learning about you as fast as five seconds into using it in that it's remembering everything you're doing and, and remembering the things that you mark that are interesting. Um, so, it, you know, it's free in the Google Play Store. It's worth checking out if you're a news junkie. Um, it's definitely uh, worth looking at. It's available in both English and Spanish, which I thought was interesting. They're, they're talking about rolling out more languages. Um, as long as they add more sources, I would like to see more um, categories. Like I was, looking, I was looking for entertainment and they didn't have that. Um, but if they start adding in more categories like that, it could be a good replacement for um, your RSS feeds or your other news kind of aggregator. So uh, news, co news cover. So for all you news junkies. News cover. Yeah. News cover. Discover the news. Excellent. All right. News cover. Yes. And mine, I'm going to go ahead and show off a widget. This is a widget I've had for a little while. And uh, I think the reason I got this, um, whatever, whatever it was that I installed this, was because Android seems to have a lot of different volume uh, volume controls. They you've do. got one for your ringer. You've got one for your media. It's like all these different things, and sometimes I want direct access to those. I want to change one. I don't want to have to pour through the settings. So this widget's called Slider Widgets. It's free in the Play Store. 
My screen is smudgy, but yeah, that's just what I got. Um, so I'll go ahead and show it off right here at the very top here. It's actually more than just the volume sliders, but you get that. You get your, you know, your screen uh, brightness. You get your volume sliders, uh, alarm volume as well. Um, and basically, this allows you to jump right into those settings. So if you want to change your alarm volume, just hit that. You get your control, it pops up right underneath, and you can make your change right away. Uh, same for the ringer, pop it up. Do that. If you want, you can kind of customize this so that it has your kind of color uh, configuration. Uh, if you want to go in there and you know make it transparent, you can do that. There we go. That'll probably look better once it's on the background. You can also change where the pop-up appears. So if you actually want it to appear immediately under, or you want it to appear down there for some reason, whatever, you can set that up in the settings. Uh, oops, that's right. I'm in settings mode, so I'll just go ahead and accept that. Um, and you can just basically work on, you know, how the widget behaves. If you click on these things, if you want to be able to toggle the alarm between mute and maximum volume, you can go ahead and activate that. And then clicking on that alarm will actually uh, do that. Um, so it's just kind of a cool quick way to get at some of these. You have these toggles down here that, you know, I always install by default. These are a little bit different. These control just kind of your settings, but you can see this little blue kind of line that goes around each icon tells you roughly where it's at right now. So it's an easy way to glance down and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's a lot quieter. You know, my music volume is a lot quieter than I actually want it to be. So I'll go ahead and boost it up or the other way. Um, so that is slider widget. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and it's got a nice, you know, it kind of follows the colors, the hollow colors. Uh, so, you know, if you have the newer device, by default, it's going to fit in with your home screen and everything. But as I said, you can customize that if you so choose. It's Slider Widget Volumes. Check it out in the Play Store. It is free. It's a nice one. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. So that uh, that is it for the arena. We have Evernote Hello. We have News Cover and Slider, which I always want to say News Cover. Yeah, News Cover. The first time I read that, I was news like, cover. News Cover. And then when I said it out loud, it made sense. Uh, and Slider Widget. Check it out and vote for your favorite app this week by going to AAAPoll.com slash 98. AAAPoll.com slash 98. And let us know which is your favorite. Do it. Vote now. And we'll check on it next week. Uh, next week, speaking of, we have Phil Nickinson, editor of Android Central, joining us, welcoming him back to the show. He's always great on the show and stoked to have him back. But I think that's it for this week, you guys. Yeah. Right on. Good Mickey. episode. Great show. Lots super of Super stoked to see you in, in high definition, Gina. Why don't you go ahead and plug away? What you got going? Uh, I hope everyone will check out my app. It's todotxt.com. It's an Android app, to-do list. Uh, I also work on a social media analytics app called ThinkUp. We just did a new release this week. It's thinkup.com. You can check that out. And, of course, I co-host This Week in Google here on the Twit Network that airs live on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific. And uh, there probably will be quite a bit of Android talk uh, at the, on the show tomorrow, so I hope you join us for that. And that's awesome. it. Awesome. Right on. Thank you again, Gina. Ron, what you got? Excellent. You can find me on the web at my home at about.me slash ronxo. That's got links to all my Twitter and Facebook, Google+, Plus, all that fun stuff. So you can find me and look at me uh, yell at T-Mobile in public spaces. And uh, check out my day job where I work at Image Comics where we make some very fine comic books, including The Walking Dead and Saga, and everyone should be reading them. And they're available digitally. You can read them on your Android device. So Boom. And you, Chad? I am Chad. You can find me at omgchad.com. I do a show about Minecraft at omgcraft.com as well. Thanks. The, the best show about Minecraft, mind you. The, the, you, always need you know, it's Ron's show. favorite show. It's my favorite Not show. Not the best, <laughs> but Ron's favorite. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howler. Check out my music blog, Escapades, at yellowgoldmusic.com. I'm having a lot of fun with that, so I hope if you're interested in that stuff, you'll check it out. Uh, that is it for this week. We are so stoked that you joined us. Thank you, and uh, join us next week. We'll be back for sure. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can always send us an email to AAA at twit.tv. Uh, you can leave us a link to a video in there as well. Love getting the video mail. Hardly ever get them, so chances are if you do it, you'll probably get played on the show. Just a little pro tip. Uh, you can find the show on Twitter. We are at Android Show. Show notes can always be found at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find past episodes there, as well as YouTube and iTunes. And finally, you can catch the show live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Thank mm -hmm. you.